Hey folks, Mr. Dell here. We are looking at a question that is uh, given a few tables. Uh, so each of, with each of those tables, I need to find the rule. Uh, and now knowing uh, y equals mx plus b, I'm going to use that information to help me find that rule. So this problem is coming from, this is um, CPM, and this is course 3, uh, section 4.1.7 specifically number 4-68. So it says here on your on your paper, copy and complete each X and Y table below uh, using what you know about M and B, write an equation that represents the data in the table. So M and B, what is that all that business? Remember M, Y equals M, X plus B is our, uh, the linear equation we use for graphing, right? So because there's some usage of that. So M represents our growth, right? Our growth rate. And then when it comes to graphing, it's also known as the slope. And then the B is always your figure zero or your initial value, right? It would be your initial value, figure zero, also known as the Y intercept when you're graphing. So if I look at my table, I just got to find those two numbers that go in this equation, and then I can have that rule, correct? So if I look at A, or uh, yeah, A, first of all, let's figure out what the M is. The M is the growth rate, right? So if I'm figuring out from here to here, it's growing by one. So that would be a consistent if I can do it from here to here. So if I look at my growth, it's consistently growing by one over here. So what is the growth over here? Well, that's adding two. And again, adding two, and again, adding two, and again, adding two. So that re right away tells me that that M is positive two. So I can say the rule is equal to two X. And now I've just got to figure out what my B is. And B, remember, is the figure zero. So if I go back to my table, it's my initial value. My initial value when X equals zero, Y equals five. That's my initial value. So my rule then is y is equal to 2x plus 5. So once I know my rule, now I can complete the table, right? I, I'm not going to just add 2 again because my x now in this case is 30. So to figure that out, I plug in 30 into the x and do the math, right? So in this case, if I'm going to figure out when x equals 30, I'm going to say 2 times 30 plus 5. So that's 60 plus 5 or 65. So that's what goes there. Do the same thing for 200. 2 times 200 is 400 plus 5, 405 goes there, right? And now I've got this 205. So what, so now I'm asking what times 2 plus 5 is 2, 400, uh, 505. So I'm given the Y, so I've got to work backwards. So what does that mean? So given the Y, I'm going to do the equation where I'm going to plug in my Y. So my Y is 505. And I need to figure out what X is. So 505 is equal to 2X plus 5. So I have to solve for X to figure out what that X would be, corresponding X. So if I subtract 5 from both sides, I get 500 is equal to 2X. And then I divide both sides by 2, right? So what is 500 divided by 2 is 250. So my X would be 250. And if I have 250 as X, I get 505 as the Y, right? Okay, so let's do this next one. So this next one here is, again, I've got a table. I need to know my growth rate and my y-intercept. So my growth rate, let's uh, to find my y equals rule. So I have consistently going by ones here. So that's good. So then it's going to look, we're going to figure out what that rate here is. So if I look, I went from 4 to 2. So I subtracted 2. Did the same thing happen here from 2 to 0? Yep, subtracted 2. From 0 to negative 2, subtract 2. From negative 2 to negative 4, subtract 2. So that tells me right there, that is my M. That is my growth rate, is negative 2. So I know my rule is Y is equal to negative 2X. That's always the M is always the coefficient of the X. And then what is my initial value, my figure 0? At X equals 0, I get a positive 4 for the Y. So I'd say plus 4. So there's my rule. So once I have my rule, once again, I've just got to fill in my, my blanks here. I know X is 30, so I plug in a 30. So I'm going to say negative 2 times 30 plus 4. So negative 2 times 30 is negative 60. Then negative 60 plus 4 is negative 56. So that's what goes here, negative 56. 
right? So do the same thing. I can just continue. Oops, I need to see that there. So just continue to plug in now my X's. So I'm going to say negative 2 times, I'm going to do my math over here, negative 2 times 150 plus 4. So negative 2 times 150 is negative 300 plus 4. When you have a negative and a positive number, you're actually subtracting. The big one keeps it signed. So that's negative 296 when I add 4 to negative 300. So I get for 150, I get negative 296. The last one, if I put 300 in, I'll do this one verbally. So negative 2 times 300 is negative 600. Negative 600 plus 4, right? We're, we're going uh, adding 4 to it. So subtract those numbers. I'm going to get negative 596. So there's what we have. Oh, and I, I didn't do that for this one up here. But when you see the X, what do they want here? Well, if you put in X, you get negative 2x plus 4. It's just that part of the rule. So over here, that part of the rule was 2x plus 5. Okay? So it's that part of the rule. All right, last one. So here's my table. In this case, I'm looking, and again, I'm looking, I want to make sure that I'm going consistently by ones here in order for me to then find my, my pattern this direction, my change. So if I'm going from here to here, from there to there, am I adding one each time? I sure am. So I am adding one each time. So I'm good on this side. So I got to now look to see what is the pattern here. The growth in this case is it looks like I'm subtracting three. Is it? Every time I'm subtracting three to get to that number. Yep. So that, that tells me that my rule is y is equal to negative three x. And then I've got to figure out what is my initial. What is my figure zero? So now zero is down here, which is okay. So there's the, my zero. And what do I get for y? I get one. So it's going to be a negative three x plus one. So there's my rule. Use my rule to figure my other numbers. Uh, for a three, well, this one actually, for a three, it's still going by one. So I could just take that to the next and subtract three and I get negative eight. I could do it that way. Or I could have put a three into here and done the math and still got negative eight. So if I put 100 into x, so negative three times 100 plus one, what is that? So negative 300 plus one. A not a negative positive number. You subtract them, and the negative there's more negative, so it's negative two hundred ninety nine. This one I've given my y, so I've got to plug in seventy in place of the y, and then actually use the rule in reverse, right? Solve that equation. So what does that look like? So subtract one from both sides. I got to solve for x. I get uh, so seventy minus one is sixty nine equals negative three x. So and at that point I divide by negative three, I'm running out of room here. Let me, let me, there we go. I divide by negative three, both sides. So that's going to give me my X, right? Cause I'm solving for X. So 69 divided by negative three, uh, is negative 23. So that's my X. So I'm going to put negative, oops, negative 23 over here. Cause that's what I had for 70 for Y negative 23 for the X. And the last thing is, is when I put in x, I get that expression, negative 3x plus 1. Okay. All right. Hope that helps.